just pulled in on a property we haven't been out much um, I have some corn with me this is a place where I recently deployed a new hawk pipe um, I want to see and maybe put some bigger holes in it I have a feeling that this pipe doesn't uh, deploy enough corn and therefore the hogs um, didn't stick around long enough however I have hogs on the camera down there I have a little spy point uh, link micro on the tree it's also a pretty good power pole and I meant to put some pine tar on there last time when I put this pipe out but I didn't bring any pine tar so uh, I got pine tar with me today so we'll uh, probably apply some after the hunt tonight one thing I've noticed you guys do not want to mess up a hunting spot by doing something new like putting uh, molasses out or putting pine tar on trees or something when you intend to hunt that same evening uh, I feel like they're getting um, cautious when, when there's some significant change and obviously a smell like that would be significant so I'm going to apply that pine tar on that power pole after the hunt tonight see you in a bit So for those tires in wheel combo, that's a positive offset of 38 millimeters. And to move those bad boys are just a little more. Move them probably by about half a centimeter. And yes, centimeters because the Imperial system sucks, so deal with it. Metric makes so much more sense. Um, yeah, five to seven millimeter maybe per side. It's, it barely fits. Just now unloading my tire wrapped a little bit on the wheelhouse. So it is a pretty tight fit. But it's a cool trailer. Ground clearance. Ground clearance matters. same group I saw on my hog pipe. So I'm hoping I'll see them later down there at the pipe again. So I just refreshed corn down here also drilled some bigger holes in this hog pipe. That pipe was still pretty full. I don't think there's enough corn coming out right now. So it widened some of these holes and also added a swivel uh, to the top here. That swivel will help with uh, keeping the chain from getting tangled up. Those hogs we saw on the way in, they're basically up there. I wouldn't be surprised if they're watching me from somewhere right now, but I'm gonna take the can in. Go down there to that power pole. And I almost did it, but it then didn't. I should have gotten my rifle just mounted right here already. My gun mount. I could have stopped in the beginning with that Steyr and just taken a shot and probably would have gotten one. But I wasn't ready, it's everything is still in my rifle bag. Alright, well, I'll be heading back there now and I'll just sit comfortably in, uh, in my can -Am. Let's do it.
just got my rifle ready. I was just walking up there. Those hawks are right at the corn right now. I'm gonna take my steyr and get the biggest one I can get. I need some meat. They literally just passed through. They didn't stop for the corn. It was the same group I saw. One bigger, so black. I spotted one, a bunch of small ones, piglets. Anyways, let's hope that there's more pigs coming up here pretty quick. Nothing else showed up unfortunately that night, so I packed up, uh, loaded up the KM again, headed back home. But then the fixed hog pipe with the bigger holes is now dispensing the corn much better. So in the following week I had lots of hogs actually showing up here. So I decided to go back out the following weekend and give it another shot. Hey guys, let's get you caught up on where I'm at. I'm back at the property I was out just uh, last weekend. I had lots of hogs come in throughout the week. Uh, lots of photos in the game, game cam. Uh, somehow they managed to get that hog pipe detached from that T-post again. Last time I was out there I put a different eye bolt on there. I put Loctite on it and everything. Somehow that thing still came off. Um, so I have yet another new eye bolt today with more nuts and this time I'm, I got the permanent Loctite and Hopefully I'm, I'm able to uh, get this thing tightened up in the way that they won't be able to uh, kick it loose anymore. Also got more corn. I have some nasty old corn in the cooler back here. Didn't really do that on purpose, but uh, I had some, some water in this cooler. And uh, I guess some more rainwater collected and then there's corn in there and it, it smells pretty nasty in that cooler right now. But that's what the hogs love, so I'm just gonna dump that on top of the pipe, uh, fill up the pipe with some fresh corn. Today is just me, COVID-19 strikes again, so I'm not going out with anybody else. And also the kids stay home so I have some quiet. All right, let me load this up and see you a little bit.
So that all happened faster than I thought. I was coming down the Can Am, just a concrete path up there. I have my thermal camera on top. There's a curve and a turn up there. In that turn, I happen to look at the monitor and all of a sudden I see heat signatures, lots of them, right in front of me in the brush. I'm like, what? At first I'm, I thought I look, I'm looking at like some some stone or some rocks or something. So I look in the in the, in the tree line that it showed up on the monitor. Sure enough, there's just hogs uh, running, but too fast, didn't get a shot with my Steyr. Uh, and I had the Steyr already on my lap, so I had it ready, but that wasn't still, still not fast enough. So I come down here, I stop the cannon right here, I have a little bit of a side down, down there to that pipe, to that pole, and I see a dark black hog just standing basically in front of that pole. Long story short, they see me take off. I go all the way to the front where that elevation stops, lay down, go prone, uh, use my bipod and I thought there's a chance they would either come back or some more are coming and sure enough all of a sudden I see that group which I think I saw further up to the left, uh, lots of sp small piglets, one sow and they were about to just walk through. So I take one shot of that sow and she went down. Piglets go out on the trees. I just ran the call, saw protection uh, call, but uh, they didn't come back. Anyways, I'm gonna go down, look at that sow, fix the hog pipe, put some corn down, come back up here, park the Can-Am. There's been hog signs all over the place back here too. I wanna put some, some pine tar on one of those trees. And then just sit up there with the can am use that thermal camera and see what I can get and get afterwards. Again, don't have any eyes with me. But I'm gonna see how how I hit that sow. It's a 308, so that wasn't the biggest sow, so I'm a little afraid that that 308 made too much of a mess, but let's go look at it. That's nasty. Got it right in the back of the head. Crazy exit wound in the front. Hog pipe. Now the question is, where did the pipe go? Back there. So it's not the eye bolt which came off. That thing actually held up pretty good, it looks like, but somehow I guess the where I connected the chain to the little swivel that must have come undone. Hawk pipe is completely empty. I'm gonna hook that back up and hopefully it'll call it good. Hawk pipe is fixed. Get that nasty corn in the ground. I load up that sow. Ready to roll out of here and go up there and see if you can find something up there. This was the point of failure. That little carbine and kind of deal did not hold up to all the constant twisting and whatnot. So I put one of those uh, chain links you can open and screw shut. Put that thing on there and put permanent Loctite on there so that should hopefully last. So let's get out of here. I set the spy point link micro to send me photos each detection now. So if something comes back now, I should get a notification on my app and my phone. And then we can hopefully try the same thing like we just did. Shoot from up there, but this time with my uh, Thor 4 right there, because it's getting dark now pretty quick. So that Steyr won't be any good. Let's get out of here. So shortly after 8 o'clock, I was actually uh, walking around scouting a bit with my uh, Thor 4 and I heard some grunting 
pretty close to the dwelling on this property. So I made my way up to towards that grunting and saw a group of hogs uh, walking through the taller weeds. Wasn't quite happy with my first shot. I thought I was right on that sow or the boar uh, behind the uh, ears, but uh, that hog didn't drop right away. With a follow-up shot, and I think the follow-up shot is what ultimately uh, put this hog down. I later found it close to the edge of the brush. These pixels you see here are due to a recent uh, firmware update I made and I have not run the uh, pixel correction afterwards. So there is a process within the Thor 4 where you can run an automatic pixel correction which will actually fix that. Pretty sure that was the boar or that hog I was aiming at. I couldn't tell from back there if it was a boar or not. I think it was probably 150 yards to 170 maybe. I thought I aimed for the neck area for the first shot. I don't think that one hit. It looks like a long shot. Um, so maybe my second one hit. The first one missed. And you look at the video. Uh, maybe then also confirm my zero one more time um, because earlier that the bigger saw I shot she didn't go down right away either so not 100% confident right now on my zero it's a decent sized spore but Yeah, I can hear the, hear the air coming out. <coughs> it's a lung shot through and through. Entry wound is right here. Exit the other side. Tiny cutters. All right, well that's number four for tonight. I'm glad that today finally I had a good night. 
first good night with the KM, and that's kind of like what I expected from getting with a new TV. This property is ideal for having a new TV. It's pretty long. I mean, we have concrete road all the way to the residence, and then there's trails all over the place. The thermal camera hive on top gives me an advantage driving around, being able to control over the remote, look left and right, um, you know, on the way in here, like I said, um, in the curve down there, I didn't see those hawks with my, with my just bare eye. Um, I happened to look at the monitor and saw quite a few heat signatures in the tree line. That's even how I, I realized that there is even hawks. Otherwise, I think I would have just uh, driven by without um, noticing them. I'm pretty happy with that setup. It's a DIY uh, thermal camera. You guys probably have seen uh, something very similar from a different uh, retailer or different company, but um, I was able to source the camera from uh, Speed IR, uh, that's the company who makes that camera. They have um, a little module with it which provides some heat sensing, I guess. They call it AI. How much AI is in there, I'm not necessarily sure, but it does recognize a heat signature and actually puts a rectangle around it and then also highlight it with um, uh, color. So it is pretty handy and I recommend that camera. I mean, quality wise, it is uh, what I would expect for for that purpose. It's a 384 sensor, I believe. It's not a 640. However, for this being the lower, um, lower quality sensor or the smaller sensor, it does produce a pretty good uh, image. And I think actually the monitor I've hooked up to it is probably what, what degrades the image a little bit. I think the camera probably does a little better, but it's uh, one of the cheaper monitors I was able to get and just need to play around a little bit um, right there. To uh, my rifle setup, it's a 6.5 Grendel uh, from ATX Armory um, with the ATN Thor 4 640, 2.5 by 25. You guys have seen that rifle before on my, on my videos. Um, shooting the 6 SRD 762 Ti QD, uh, one of my favorite cans. However, I have recently recommended the Rugged Razor 762. I was able to test that can in one of my recent videos. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, look for the 300 Blackout Shootout. Those are two video videos right now. The Rugged Razor 762, why do I like that can so much? Uh, I look for three things. I look for uh, obviously suppression. So is it quiet? Is it lightweight? Because if you run around uh, on a place like this the whole night, you want to save as much weight as you can especially hanging off your rifle in the front. And three, what's the length in that thing? The shorter, the better because of handling. The Rugged Razor uh, meets all these three criteria for me. So uh, it's a pretty lightweight suppressor, uh, does good on suppression, suppressing sound, and is fairly short. On top of that, that can does not break the bank. It's actually price-wise uh, significantly cheaper uh, than other titanium cans. If I would buy a suppressor today, 762, I would get that Rugged Razor 7, 762. I have also the Rugged Obsidian 45, very versatile suppressor. You guys have seen it on my uh, 450 Bushmaster uh, ACR rifle. I also just recently recommended it to somebody who was uh, asking for a suppressor for his uh, Marlin All Weather 357 Magnum. Um, so I double checked the Obsidian 45 is actually rated for 357 Magnum. Uh, so if that's something you guys are looking for, um, highly recommend Obsidian 45 because at the end of the day you can you can run it on your uh, 40 on your 45 pistol. You can run it on a 450 Bushmaster if you wanted to in a rifle round. You could shoot 300 Blackout Subsonic through it, uh, and then you know uh, 357 Magnum for example too. So very versatile. You can run it in a short configuration for pistols or there's a baffle you can you can take off. Well, I think two or three baffles actually which come off at the end. Um, so pretty impressed by rugged. Uh, and yeah, if I if I need another 762 can, it's probably the razor I would I would look at right now. But uh, I have some some more uh, suppressors coming up. Uh, I just checked out uh, two torrent uh, suppressors. Um, which are he made here in Texas, so I give that a double thumbs up. Um, and we'll test those pretty soon. It's a 762. Um, they're both 762. Um, need to take a closer look at them. Actually, don't know the specs right now, but 
Uh, anyways, uh, appreciate you guys staying with us. We are close to 10,000 subscribers right now. Um, maybe by the time we uh, publish this video, we are already at 10,000. Um, can't tell you guys enough how much I appreciate you guys staying with us. We have viewers from, from the Dominican Republic. Uh, we have folks from Germany watching. We have folks from Canada watching. I mean, all over the place. Uh, so I'm very humbled for the viewership we have, um, the comments you guys uh, submit, that's what keeps us going. So uh, thumbs up guys, thank you so much for staying with us. If you haven't sub subscribed yet, please do give us a thumbs up, tell us how you like those videos, leave us a comment, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>